We understand that right now, small businesses are struggling more than ever. So we wanted to give a little bit back by helping small businesses out, looking at their businesses, reviewing them and giving some feedback. So here's episode one. A few months ago, I posted on my social channels that we were gonna be doing this and we were inundated with responses from all of you guys from around the world. And can I just say, it was absolutely incredible. And it was so difficult for us to shortlist the businesses that we actually ended up reviewing in this video. So thank you to every single one of you who sent in your submission. We will be doing more videos like this, so I'm sure there will be an opportunity for us to do this with you and at some point in the future. So here we go, here is a handful of businesses that really, really stood out to us and really did deserve a little bit of recognition. Hey Ben, my name is Dodds. I founded the mobile app Sustainably AR, which when connected to fashion brands' websites allows their users to try on garments virtually before purchasing. The That's motivation cool. behind this is the fact that there's 17 billion items of clothing returned to brands each year. And yeah, and so this, this is something that we're seeing as well, and this is completely true. And this is interesting. Um, so going back to talking about Gymshark's model or the e-commerce business model, I feel like a lot of people nowadays are looking at it and going, this is the model, this is the model to, to go to. And I'm seeing large brands, retailers, whatever you want to call it, sort of shifting themselves into a model that more closely resembles what we do here at Gymshark. And what I'm very excited about what Dodds is doing here is he's thinking outside the box because the business model that we see today is not final. We will look back in 10 years, 20 years, 30 years at the way that businesses ran in 2021, 20, 22, and we will know that it was just part way along the journey of this new truly you know direct agile business model that we're all seeing today so i'm very excited by this and he's right returns is an issue and this is something that we need someone with an almighty brain to solve hopefully don't that person 550 billion dollars annually to deal with the true impact though is the environmental damage which is yep. 4.7 million metric tons of co2 emitted Yearly. The app works by tracking the user's body and then applying a 3D version of that garment that they selected online. It also understands where the light sources are coming from the user's environment and can cast similar shadows on those 3D models to give as realistic a look as possible. We need to put Dodds in touch with someone here. <laughs> like we need Do Dodds, yeah. come in to HQ. He sounds like you're from the UK, so come in. I genuinely, come in. We'll get you a meeting with, with Debs, who's in charge of all the sort of innovation and more forward thinking things here at Gymshark and the things that we're looking to implement down the line. I genuinely come in and have a chat with us. I think this is really cool. The main reason people are actually returning items is because they're buying just one garment but in multiple sizes yeah. with the full intention of returning most mm -hmm. of them. The app is actually able to calculate the user's measurements and compare that with metadata taken from product information and to then recommend the perfect size for the user, which I can reduce returns by up to 40% and help keep tons of unwanted items out of landfills. Currently, myself and a team of developers are working on an MVP soft launch where the first 50 brands that sign up will get exclusive access to the app, giving them a competitive advantage. Well, give us a go then, Dodds. <laughs> let, let us have a look. you're a man of innovation, it's at the heart of everything Gymshark does, yeah. but for some brands, they can be more cautious when it comes to new tech and big yeah. changes. So what I'm interested to learn is that if you were me, reaching out to these brands who perhaps see innovation as slightly more risky, what would you say to them to convince them to sign up to an app that, although it hasn't launched yet, is in their brand's best interest? Just answering that question, if I was you, how would I approach brands? It really depends and it varies. So if you're coming to us at Gymshark, emotion, 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 and it, it really varies as well by the size of the audience that you're speaking to. Now, I, on something like this, personally, would lean towards emotion. So again, what you were saying about sustainability and the, the issues and the negative impacts around the CO2 emissions from clothes being returned and so on and so on, that's really important. But equally, it's as important to me about what I mentioned previously about what's that business model of tomorrow? Where are we actually going? Because we don't want to be static. Now, if I was speaking to a company that was more traditional, then you need to know your numbers inside out, right? You need to know your numbers inside out and you need to give them a genuine commercial reason as to why they would get behind this and why they would invest in this. Ultimately, it is very, very, very difficult to do that. So it's going to essentially come to you really understanding your audience, understanding who you're pitching this to, and essentially what they want and what they want to get out of it. Now, you're in a fortunate position where I think that more people than ever are aware of the issues that things like this have on our environment and our climate. So I think it's gonna be an easier battle the longer that it goes on. But ultimately, you're right, firms and people are inherently afraid of the unknown and this might be a little bit of that. So I would advise that you just really know your audience and just think carefully about the way that you approach them. Don't have a one size fits all pitch or strategy. 
you just need to be able to be really good on your feet, but you need to be really in tune with the emotional aspects of what you're trying to do and also the rational and the more numerical, quantitative uh, side of what you're doing as well. Thank you, Dodds. Hi, I'm Grace Feller. I'm 24 years old. Hello, Grace. And I am the founder of Miss Kick. Miss Kick is a female football brand I created to unite the global women and girls football community. We are based in a co-working space in Manchester. I was passionate about football from a very young age and was fortunate enough to play for the These videos are awfully well edited. So like they're re no, they're brilliantly edited. So I'm wondering about you now. I'm, w I'm worried. <laughs> Better than our videos. <laughs> the likes of Liverpool and Manchester City. Sadly, when I was 18, I was released and I was a bit unsure about what I wanted to do. So I, I went to university and it was actually here that I had the idea to combine my passion. Congratulations, Grace, that's really cool. Passion for football and business. We then launched the brand in June 2018 at my dad's football tournament. Well, it reminds me of the gym shot story, it's quite similar actually. Football, I always felt disadvantaged being a girl and so did most of my teammates. Sadly, this is still a problem for young women and girls all over the world. Miss Kick was born out of these concerns and we're on a global journey to create a movement and inspire positive change. We sell apparel, sportswear and accessories with the intent to inspire. We're also proud to say that we donate percentage of all our sales to the Miss Kick Foundation. This is our social enterprise that is aiming to level the playing field and inspire more girls to get involved in the sport that we all love. Despite the... Love that. I think that's very cool. In challenging times, I've managed to take the business from my mum's kitchen to a team of three that work out of Manchester. We now also use a third party logistics provider for our well fulfillment. Done. I want to take this brand all over the world. I want to host events and importantly spread awareness about the inequalities that girls and women still have to face in the football industry. I have two questions for Ben. Firstly, growing a business globally comes with a lot of risks. What's the best pieces of advice you can give to me as I begin my international journey? Great people. It's literally as simple as that. You said that you're now a team of three. You need brilliant people because especially with growing internationally, by definition, you cannot be everywhere at once. So you need to surround yourself with brilliant people that can support you on that journey. They don't necessarily have to be experienced, although that definitely helps. They have to be buy into your vision. I think I said in one of the previous videos about having a why makes a huge difference. You've got that in an abundance. So. You really want someone that really buys into your vision and I guess why you're doing what you're doing. But ultimately you need great people to support you on this journey. Secondly, I'll be looking to raise further investment. What's the best piece of advice you can give to ensure I have the right people on board in the business? Oh, that's interesting. Um, so if you're trying to raise investment, then you need to do a little bit of self-reflection and understand what you're good at. Now I can already tell that you you, you know, you are the brand, you understand the vision, you know where you want to go inside out. So I would definitely advise that you surround yourself with people that are brilliant on the back end of the business in finance, ops, logistics. If you are looking for investment, people are going to want to know how is the business performing? What does it look like from a quantitative point of view? You want to know the data inside out, the financials. You need someone that's going to be able to truly own those, understand them and package them up in a way that's digestible for these potential investors down the road to, you know, be able to digest and, and as a result of that, understand the business. So surround yourself with great people and just, like I said, make sure that you're investing in the back end of the business as well, because that that is the foundations that will allow you to turbocharge the front end of the business. And inevitably, if you want investment, they'll help you get that investment too. Hello, Ben and the Gymshark team. My name's Lance Lewis. I'm 34 years old and I am based in Swindon. I am the director of- That's where our DC is. I spent time in Swindon, Lance. GCAL Services. Um, we are a property and maintenance company um, and we work with electricians, plasterers, dry liners, um, plumbers, painters and decorators, all sorts of different trades. Most of the bulk of our work is with the UK house builders um, and we work on the customer care side to so go into customers properties um, and they've got a snag list that they've compiled and we work on that snag list. Oh, nice, yeah, I it's get it. my, Myself and my wife at the moment, um, but I work with subcontractors. Where do I see myself in five to 10 years? I love to get some employed guys on board. Yeah. So, like I said, we work with lots of subcontractors at the moment, so I'd love to be able to employ two, three guys and um, have them on the roads, um, in their own vans, working up and down the country, and that would be really good. The question I have for you, Ben, is, how do I go about that? So, like I said, I'm working with subbies. How did you do when you, what did you do to get your first person on board and employed? 
In terms of the first person that we had on board, Lance, the first person was actually my brother, Joe, so I was quite lucky on that, on that point. And he, it was basically, he was gonna go to uni, but he didn't really want to, so he ended up doing a summer at Gymshark and never left. So first and foremost, obviously you've got to have the work for them. So, and it sounds like you've got it. If you're using subcontractors, then there's work there to be done. Um, I'm assuming that it makes financial sense for you to bring that person on board. You need to sort of really carefully think about what you're after. And if it is genuinely, you're having people that are going to go around the different properties and do snagging and so on, then you've got quite a clear role and job description. So I would genuinely, that sounds really corporate and boring, but I would genuinely write on a, even on one A4 page, super headline, what is that person going to do? What, you know, what, they need to understand exactly what their role entails. And I think that's really important. You need to think about the opportunities for them. But ultimately, when you're hiring, you want to hire people that, you know, are ambitious, believe in what you're doing, understand what you're doing, and are going to work incredibly hard. Because as you employ that first person, you're starting to build a corporate culture. And that genuinely, I firmly believe, will define the success of your business. Because if you have a great culture of this person that you bring in does a great job everywhere they go, that will proliferate and people will come back and work with you time and time again. So just think carefully about exactly what you want that person to do, communicate it clearly, and hire based on who they are as an individual, their value, values and their culture. Make sure that they believe in what you're doing. Um, and yeah, I think from there you can't really go wrong. Thank you very much, take care, cheers, bye-bye. All right, man. You can, tell it, you can tell he's a good lad, yeah, can't you? Oh, I love that. I've seen this product before. It's a really good product. Yeah, uh, It's like a mini CrossFit time of thing. I wonder if that's his product. I wonder if that's his product. Because if that is his product, then I've seen this before. Yeah, is that what it is? Is that actually yeah, thing? Yeah, Fucking hell. It. I've seen this, this is sick. G'day Ben, my name is James Newbury. I'm 30 years old and I'm- Is he an Aussie? Yeah. yeah. Fucking, I wonder where he's from. I've got family in Australia. I'm from Adelaide, South Australia. Ah, there you go then. He's... I'm a full-time professional CrossFit athlete. And when I'm not doing CrossFit, I'm thinking of cool ideas that will help people in the fitness industry. So here I've just started my tiny timer uh, for two minutes to try and tell you all about the business. So basically this is my business, it's called Tiny Timer. By the way, I've seen this, this is an amazing product, I absolutely love it. I think, um, I think Noel might have one, or if he doesn't he was going to get one. It is a portable battery operated gym clock that you can take anywhere you like. Especially with so many people doing home workouts and stuff and sort of makeshift workouts at home. I love this, well done. It comes on a miniature tripod and the name was it came from basically my miniature dash hounds, which I absolutely adore. <laughs> so pocket sized and super handy. When the when COVID kind of set in and lockdown started setting in, I saw a need and a want for people um, wanting to do workouts in their living room. And I figured, you know, having a gym clock would, clock would give you that gym feel. And I also noticed in my gym, people are always looking at doing open gym and their own workouts at different times and there might be 10 or 15 people going at it and there's usually only one gym clock available. So I figured if everyone had one of these, they would be able to time their own workouts in their own time without using their phones. Love it. So at the moment, it's just myself, my dad, and our business partner. And we're kind of just, you know, juggling a whole bunch of different hats at the moment, which is super fun. But in the future, we would like to add a bunch of different features and have a whole range of different styles of timers for different kind of uses. Um, I'm really excited to put some of those features into play. And probably the biggest question I could ask you is how do you get that reach worldwide? Uh, reach worldwide, I think genuinely social media. People, people, I think people think that social media is sort of like, not that the ship sailed, but not far off that. If you want reach, social, social, social. Like This is a great product as well. I often find people say to me, how can you get people to use your product? If it's a great product, people will use the product. So genuinely, like, get this in people's hands. Like, send me one, I'll have one. I would love one, do you know what I mean? It's like, let's get people testing it, posting about it online. I mean, in fact, don't even send me one, I'll buy one, genuinely. Get it in people's hands, get people talking about it, and then that scale will come globally. The whole, this whole thing of like borders when it comes to the internet is just, it's just not a thing. Like me and you will follow many of the same people and they'll live in Australia, they'll live in Canada, they'll live in the UK, in the States, in Europe, they'll live all over the world. The internet has, you know, removed that, particularly in the English speaking world. We all operate in that same ecosystem. So I wouldn't, I wouldn't worry about that. Just get it in the hands of the right people. Thank you so much for your time, Ben, and I hope to talk to you really soon. Well done, boss. Hello, I'm Millie, I'm 27, and I'm from Oxfordshire. I started... Hello, Millie. Charlie and Millie Co. in October last year. Oh, it's a dog brand, isn't it? 
Yeah. It's a dog brand. Robin's going to love this. We sell premium accessories for oh, dogs. She, and it's going to be that sausage dog brand, isn't it? Yeah, she, she wants one of them. She wants one of them sausage dogs. So she. People love their dogs. It's funny, right? Because when we got Bilbo, I genuinely, I, you can put this in the video if you want. I, I, I wasn't massive. I didn't really want to get him. That sounds horrible, right? It was like this, Robin was desperate to get him. It was crazy how I went from, oh, there's a dog in the house to I would kill someone that tries to hurt my dog. Like, you love your dog so much and we want him to have like the best food. We look after the dog better than we look after ourselves. Genuinely, no word of a lie. It's just me running the business with the help of my yeah. fiance, Jake, and of course, Charlie. I spotted Hello, a gap Charlie. in the market when looking to get Charlie a dog jumper. There was no middle ground between thin and cheap jumpers and very expensive high quality ones. We wanted to bring something to the market that was high quality, but affordable. After a lot of research into manufacturers and logistics, we launched our chunky knit dog jumpers in December last year. Great. We now have over 500 sales and sell oh, three dear. different sizes and six different colors. We've had to restock several times. We need to make them for more dogs though, not just sausage dogs. Do it for other dogs. Oh, they are for all dogs. Oh, they are. Oh, nice. And have started to launch and yeah, explore new yeah. product ranges such as bobble hats, dog blankets, harnesses, cool. and more. Our main marketing tool has been Instagram. I managed to grow Charlie's account to just over 20,000 followers in four months, which is how I came to realize just how big the pet industry is. The Charlie and Millie Co account has now got over 5,000 followers and directs a majority of our sales to our Etsy shop. We've had really great feedback from our customers about the quality and the love for the brand and online community that we've created. We have lots of aims for the future. The main one being we want to be a leading luxury pet accessory company. And a, I love it. Honestly, I think that's really cool. And a primary focus on quality and great design. We're in the process of moving the Etsy shop to a Shopify website, which we aimed. Good. Shopify, brilliant, massive. Like Genuinely, for companies like this, Shopify is the place to be. That's genuinely, that's the right thing to do. Well done. This spring. We want to be able to increase our supply chain order quantities so that we can manufacture new custom colors, have seasonal collections, design new products, and lower our- He's a good looking dog. No wonder he's got so many followers cost per unit. Some longer term goals are to set up our own office. This will be a dedicated office, stock room and studio. To grow our social media presence to over 100,000 followers. We want to be a brand that makes people smile and to get people excited. I'd love to know any advice that you've got when dealing with manufacturers and minimum order quantities. As Manufacturers, relationship, relationship, relationship and you want quality, quality, quality. It's that simple. Don't we live in a world, right, where people want to get something for nothing all the time. Don't go crazy and push them to the limit on price. Like, you want a genuine relationship and a genuine partnership with these manufacturers because hopefully they're going to, you know, you're going to work and grow together for, for years to come. So my advice on that would be just find the right people, meet them face to face, create a relationship with them and, you know, make sure that everyone's succeeding together. Thank you so much for watching. I hope you enjoyed hearing about our small business. Hold on, Charlie and Millie. Hi, my name's Alex. I am 30 years old and I'm from the southeast of London. Alongside my friend Matthew, I'm one of the co-founders of Arex Gaming, a video game focused YouTube channel. Oh, so. Our team now consists of four people alongside- Ed. By the way, I'm a gamer at heart. Growing up, Call of Duty, Gears of War. I was absolutely obsessed with World of Warcraft. I am, I... yes. I'm a gamer at heart. Ben and Terence, and last year we launched Endgame, which is our clothing and accessory brand that combines the worlds of streetwear. Gaming's massive as well. This is cool, I like this. Techwear and gaming. Additionally, last year I also launched Video Games, which is a brand that focuses on combining the worlds of fitness and gaming. Some of the products we have produced Gym include shirt. a custom molded Nintendo Switch case capable of holding Sick. the console, accessories and games, all in a stylish package. We also have the end game clothing, including I love this. I absolutely love this. I'm just looking at all these little figurines in the background as well. This is really fucking cool. Is that Zelda? Is he a Zelda fan? I can't really tell what it is. Being t-shirts, hoodies, sweatshirts, bombers, and even a custom made jacket. This is really cool. Additionally, while I can't well actually show it just yet, we have finished working on some officially licensed video game products, which will also be selling through the end game brand I love this that. year. Well As done. for video games, the focus here has been trying to present fitness information through the lens of video games. One of the ways I did this last year is taking an iconic video game character, working with a personal trainer to take their character attributes and turn that into an actionable workout plan, allowing people to get results whilst also enjoying the process. I love In this. terms of the next five to 10 years, this the end really game cool. plan is to create a high quality yet affordable brand for all things geek culture. This also involves growing the licensed product arm of the business so we can create unique and stylish items for gamers. And on the video game side of things, I want to grow this brand both digitally and physically. He's got a deadlift on him. 
online. I want to continue to grow this into a platform that provides useful and accessible fitness information for gamers. And then beyond that point, I want to open a physical gym that combines both of these worlds, a place to build That's a crazy. community around both gaming and lifting, showing that you can indeed play video games and still lead a healthy, active lifestyle. In terms of questions for you, it'd be great to get some insight on how to go about scaling the business once things start to take off. Also, how you sort of dance the line between cost and quality in clothing, and what you feel are some of the best ways to grow a business in this current climate. Growing the business, social media, you need to be getting the product in the right hands. Clearly, it's an amazing product. It's an incredibly cool brand. Like, I could imagine myself buying into it all day long. Um, I'm fascinated by your gym and gaming gym idea. I'm very interested to hear that. I'd like to chat to you about that, actually. So assuming that it's starting to take off, you just need to back yourself with stock. That's where I see a lot of businesses aren't, and you have to be very careful with taking this risk, right? But a lot of businesses aren't comfortable taking a lot of the risks that we had to take or we, and we did take to turbocharge Gymshark's growth in the early days. If people are interested in your business, then back it with the stock quantities. I know previously we've spoken about a wider product range. You seem to have a wide product range. You need to back it with quantities, particularly in the key drivers um, for your business. Dancing the line between quality and cost. Well, quality, you can't negotiate on that. You need to maintain great quality, great uh, relationship with, with your suppliers. You need to be meeting them, being with them, and making sure they understand the long-term vision of your brand. And I, I'm a firm believer that people will buy great products. So. You never want to cut the cost to the point where quality falters. You want to maintain quality at all times. Yeah, I really like that. I genuinely really like that. Well over skill. This is that young lad, isn't it? Hello everyone. My name is George Corbin. I'm 11 years old and I am the founder of Well Over Skill Apparel. By the way, thank you so much for giving me this opportunity to pitch my business to you guys. Well Open Skills first founded in the first lockdown after my first Mindset Academy and one phrase really got stuck in my head. I'll be successful because of my will, not just because of my skill. You'd have all of the skill and... I agree. What's that saying? Um, hard work beats talent when talent doesn't work hard. It's a similar sort of uh, concept, isn't it? Yeah. Completely agree, George. And talent in the world but it's useless if you can't be bothered to put in the determination, hard work and commitment. I want my living skill to become a beacon brand to spread a positive message to young people like me and help people have a growth mindset and to get a positive mental attitude. Well done, George. The help I need. Let's face reality, I'm only 11, I don't really know, but I know nothing about suppliers or finance. Yeah, I really need a global pa platform to spread the positive, me pos positive message to young people. I'm really inspired by all you've achieved, and I really, really want this opportunity to work hard and to learn from your experience. Thank you so much, have a good day, bye. Well, listen, George, in terms of finance and that side of things, the best thing that you could do is genuinely just try and learn yourself in the meantime and educate yourself so that you've got like a base foundational knowledge. But ultimately, when you need experts, you need to bring them in. You need to try and bring them into your business as it continues to grow. But first things first for yourself, especially at 11 years old, build that foundational knowledge. Like, this is going to sound mental, right? But just make sure that you're listening in your maths class, your business classes accountancy, just understanding the way that businesses fundamentally work, that foundational knowledge will really, really help. He's a legend, well done. It is so cool. What's good? My name is James Moore. I'm 22 years of age and I'm the founder of RMD White Clothing. We're a UK-based fashion lifestyle brand which focuses on selling affordable, high-quality garments to the team 20-something. RMD White is not just clothing, it's a lifestyle. It's about finding your meaning, your passion, your remedy, carving your own path to doing what you love every day. So cool. my thing is, I started all of this from my bedroom. And that's li this is literally like looking back at um, old Gymshark pictures. This is really cool. Mm -hmm. I mean, Clearly he's got traction as well. If he's... Yeah, he emailed you in 2000. Did I respond? 16, yeah. Oh, well. Wow. And, and what a lovely guy. That he put on his wall in a little poster. Should not have my own space now for the last two years. And due to the insane growth, this is cool. I had to move to... Yeah! That's amazing. I'm very fortunate to have employed the best people and I'm super lucky to even have members of my family involved too. Well done. I've got my mum and cousin who are the queens of quality control and logistics. Alongside this, we have the most innovative in-house creative team who work on all the exciting projects we have. 
as well as the super important. This is literally like looking back at Gymshark back in the day. This is really cool. Finance well operation done. side of the business. Well done. Back. Raw mail. Back end of the business is just as important as the front end. In the next five years, we are going to conquer America. So I'm going to leave you with a question, Ben. Do you feel that your skills can be transferred to any industry? And is there any avenues you'd like to explore which isn't related to Gymshark? Oh, that's an interesting question. Do I feel as those skills can be transferred? Yeah, to be honest, I do actually in, in many respects. So, so particularly with creatives, right? Creatives often can apply that creativity to many different things. And I think that's really interesting. And even personally, I've always been more interested in creating things rather than the medium by which we create things. So I love messing around with motorbikes, obviously with business, with product, apparel, hardware, software, so many different things. So in answer to your question, yeah, I do think that you can, uh, that skills can be transferred to an industry, albeit specific industry knowledge and experience is very, very valuable too. And it can help save businesses time as well, which is really, really important. Is there any avenues you want to explore that is unrelated to Gymshark? Personally, yes, there is things that I would like to explore, but pretty much all of those I can do through or via Gymshark, which makes me incredibly, incredibly lucky. Something that I'm really passionate about is um, equality of opportunity. So making sure that everyone, wherever you are, whoever you are, wherever you're from, whatever it is, you have the same opportunity as someone else. It frightens me to death to think that there are, you know, kids out there that don't have the opportunity that they should and may not fulfill their potential as a result of that. That genuinely frightens me to death. And I want to, ha to make sure that people have opportunity. And this, by the way, it, at its core came from the fact that I was fortunate and I was lucky to fall into an IT class that allowed me access to the Adobe Creative Suite, to Illustrator, to Dreamweaver, to Photoshop. And it was the skills that I learned through that creative suite that then allowed me to create Gymshark and turn it into what it is today. And it's almost like when you see the domino effect just getting bigger and bigger, the snowball effect getting bigger and bigger. I think that could happen in so many more places if more people had the ac access to creative software and things like that. So yeah, that's one of the main things that comes to mind when I think of sort of things that I want to explore and spend time on unrelated to Gymshark. It's just something that I'm truly passionate about and I think it's really important going forward. Hey guys, my name is Peter Brennan. I am 40 years old um, and although originally from England, I now live in Sydney, Australia. I am the co- He's got an Aussie accent. I think he was founder and the head of brand of a non-alcoholic beer company called nice. Heaps Normal. We launched in July. By the way, everyone in Australia says heaps. It's like yeah. heaps this, heaps that. Last year, and by October, we closed a $1.4 million seed raise with a $7.2 oh, million God. valuation. Well done. Now a team of 10 amazing people really helping us bring this dream to life. Our first SKU is what we call a Quiet XBA. It's a non-alcoholic extra pale ale and it's received some rave reviews from some of Australia's top food and drinks gurus. We created this business for the everyday athletes, artists and entrepreneurs who agree with our belief that some things are just too good to be wasted. We also feel like our drinking culture is systematically broken and we're trying to fix it by creating a full flavoured beer that doesn't give you a hangover. Our goal is to obtain category leadership in Australia within the next 12 to 18 months before rapidly expanding overseas in the next five to 10 years. Ben, my question to you is this, what are the three most important things for a company to consider when it first launches in a new country? I guess you can also flip the question and say, what are the three hardest lessons you learned launching Gymshark overseas for the first time? So we were quite lucky, and I think I mentioned it previously about the internet being a great leveler, particularly across the Western world and English speaking countries. So you can launch, as it were, globally without almost leaving your country. Now, if you're going to be opening up offices around the world, time zone is a massive thing that we have noticed, particularly like we, we opened up our Denver office now and we've got offices in Hong Kong as well. And if you've got your meetings with Hong Kong will generally early, so you know you might have a meeting at six, seven o'clock in the morning, and then your meetings with the States would be later on at night. And working in a business, you're almost burning the candle at both ends at that point. So you need to be super aware of that. Cultural differences, there are massive cultural differences between different parts of the world from the way that they communicate, the way that they act around certain things, you know, that's something that I think you need to be super aware of as well. And I think also you just need to be super aware of what the consumer wants, because ultimately that's why you're doing what you're doing, right? And I think you need to take your time to understand what the, what the people, what the community and what the consumer want in these different markets, talk to them, get to understand what they're after before you, you know, sort of impose your product on them. I think that's really, really important as well. Guys, thanks for having me on. I, I used to live with my grandparents on the Stratford Road in Hopley Heath, so I feel like... 
he's literally from over the road from us. Yeah. I feel like I know you guys, even though I'm on the other side of the world. A uh, huge fan of Jim Shark and what you guys are doing, and super grateful for your time. Hold well on, Cheers. Hold well on. Hi Ben and everyone at Gymshark, my name is Michelle Hans, I'm from Leeds and my business is She Who Dares Wins. Nice. So She Who Dares Wins is all about female empowerment. It was born off the back end of my social media following and the story about being a woman in construction and not having many other women around me to look up to. Mm -hmm. Product range, um, extremely good high quality hoodies like this one here. I like and like t-shirts, everything sustainable, organic cotton and vegan approved. Really She Who Dares Wins is more than just a business and more behind these products. It's about inspiring and empowering women and giving them the support they need to really go on and conquer whether that be lifestyle choices or their career. See, I, I find this really interesting. I think this is a great, great cause. And then just going back to the, the female side of things, I've, I, I chat to someone occasionally who sends me a lot of information on, on, I guess, the disproportionate effect on women around the pandemic, particularly in the last 12 months versus versus males, which is it's been sort of opened my eyes as well. And I think you're right. I mean, Grace talked about the, um, the disproportionate effect on women in the football um, industry and now you're talking more about construction industry listen i think you've got a great cause and i think it's it's great that you are pushing forward with this because ultimately we want to live in a world that has genuine equality of opportunity to put you know wherever you are whoever you whoever you are wherever you're from whatever your gender is so i think this is really important and i think this is a great cause Right now, it's just me in this little office. My garage is completely stacked out with products. Uh, and yeah, it's hectic. I have two young boys and a husband who are fully supportive, but I'm getting to a point now where I probably should be getting some people on board. By the way, huge respect for doing this whilst having a family. I, I've spoken about this a little bit in the past where we took massive risks with Gymshark when we first started and we rolled the dice several times and there were many times we were very, very close to failing and losing everything. However, I did that without kids without you know having to worry about the people that I'm there to support so the fact that you're doing this and you're taking time to do this and you're taking the risk on whilst having a family is amazing genuinely that's really really cool so congrats board this leads me nice into my first question for you Ben um, when you put a lot of money into your stock in the early days of a business uh, that's kind of your main liability. Yeah. How did you know when it was right to take that next step, to get the premises or to employ someone? It's always going to be a bit of a leap of faith. And I think we, so we were definitely out of stock a, a reasonable amount, but when we first genuinely invested in stock, we moved from the printing where you could have blanks, right? And you can print them with all sorts of different logos, which was really useful and efficient from a back end perspective to actually purchasing a, a, a decent quantity of, of you know, final stock so you can print it or change it. It, it was what it was. <clears throat> I'm going to be honest, that was one of those leaps of faith and it was quite nerve wracking. I think you just need to, if you're getting regular sales, genuine like consistent sales on a daily basis, then you just need to continue to expand that pro product portfolio and really think outside the box. And what you've got to remember with product is as you're exploring this new world of product, you will find certain products that will just absolutely blow up massively. I remember I was watching someone who was talking about the fact that I think it was it was Jeff Bezos and he was talking about the fact that baseball, for example, you hit a home run, you smash the ball out of the park and you get a home run for that um, or one run. Whereas in business, you can have one product that gets you a thousand home runs. So I wouldn't go crazy deep on quantities, but I would, uh, as in quantity of buy for an individual unit. So I wouldn't buy three products in a thousand units each. I'd rather have like 10 products on, you know, 300 units each, for example. So I, I would say be rational, be thoughtful, but invest in new products and try and think outside of the box rather than go and do super deep in quantity of units per item. And then that should give you, you know, the information that you need to then decide where you carry on and, and buy into after that. What's up, guys? My name is Awazera, and I'm the founder and CEO of the company called Snack Sample. I'm 32 years old, and I'm currently located in Montreal, Canada. A Canadian. Mission was to bring sample well, snacking to. By the way, I've never been to Montreal, but I really want to go. It's meant to be absolutely gorgeous and very historical. I really want to visit. It's meant to be good. Simple snacking to life by offering high quality ingredients 
innovation, eco-friendly packaging, and chemical-free product. And we achieved our mission by launching a first product called the Minute Muffin. Yes, you heard it right, a muffin in a cup. All you need is remove the lid, add water up till the fill line, mix it well, put it in microwave 60 seconds, oh, so and there you make it. That's sick. I just assumed that it would literally just be almost like a finished thing. That's really cool. You have a fresh, delicious muffin ready to eat in well less than 60 well seconds. We currently have more than seven flavors seven delicious flavor and are available in more than six. I want to know what gave her the idea to do this. Like, I, genuinely, I wouldn't know where to start with this. Like, I wouldn't know where to start. That's or really cool. Canada. We're currently also selling our product throughout our website. And this year in 2021, we have signed different distribution deals in more than five countries. Well done. We currently have 10 employees in our plant. I and hope she signed a distribution agreement in the UK. And all our production is 100% automated. We started this project in 2019 with the ice cream on top. Good, it's almost lunchtime here, you're killing me. And we start growing. I can't have it anyway, I'm off sugar, aren't I? But... 600%. In five years, I see Snack Sample being one of the leading brands in the snacking industry. So my question for Ben is, in 2021, what still keeps you up at night? And also my second- What keeps me up at night this year? Everything. <laughs> We're in the middle of a pandemic while I was trying to grow faster than we've ever grown double the headcount, open offices around the world, um, and maintain a brilliant culture. So yeah, to be honest, the main thing in terms of keeping me up at night genuinely is culture. Like we've got, and I, I wish you could visit, I'm sure at some point you'll be able to. When you walk through the doors here, you can just feel it. And it's an amazing, amazing culture. So I'm concerned about remote working. Listen, it's coming, right? And we offer remote working at Gymshark, and I think that's amazing. But I'm also concerned about the effect it may or may not have on culture. Uh, and I'm also concerned about as we continue to grow as a business, how do we maintain it? Because you know that allow our brilliant culture allows ideas to proliferate. It allows us to be creative. It allows us to think outside the box, and you know it keeps us ahead. So that would probably be the main thing I would say that's keeping me up at night at the moment. My second question is: At what point did you realize that Jim Shark was about to become one of the biggest brands in the world? Oh. So the first realization moment that this could be something special was after the first event that we did. And I, I've told the story about before the event, we did a few hundred pound in revenue a day. And after the event, in the first half an hour of turning the website on, we did 30,000 pounds of revenue and we sold out of everything. And that was when like I had the wow moment. In terms of becoming a truly, truly big and global brand, I think there's been a few moments. Walking into our headquarters on the first day a few years ago was amazing because it's very tangible and it's very in your face. We've had some incredible moments at events. Funnily enough, in Canada, in Toronto, we did an incredible, incredible event. And we actually did a bad job of the event. Anyone that was there will know we, we had too many people turn up for us to manage. But with that problem, you're just thinking, wow, if we can do this in Toronto and in LA and in New York and in Frankfurt and in London and in Melbourne, all these different places around the world, there's definitely realizations of the scale of the brand because with everything being online nowadays it's it's difficult to get a feel for it and numbers can you know they just look like numbers and to see see it in a tangible physical place in front of your eyes is it's a special and um, quite a daunting feeling as well at times. Hiya my name's Amara and I'm the owner of a student stationery company called the Noti Air Club. I'm 21 nice. years old and I'm based in Lancashire in the northwest. I started this business during my gap year for- I love this. I love seeing these pictures as well. And this is something I wish we'd have done more of. I'm happy that we did. We've got all these sort of original pictures that you might have seen in previous videos or online. Anyone that is starting a business, keep taking photos like this because you know, you're able to document what you're doing. And I think that's really, really special. Here from university where I work some part-time jobs and I also won a small entrepreneurship competition to help me fund the whole thing. Well done, Our well startup done. company is five months old. We create so it's a very young company then. subject specific note pads and this is an example of our law range designed specifically for you students. I love this, like, I would genuinely use this. I, at the moment I just grab, I mean I, most of my stuff's online on the computer but oftentimes because I just like to write as well, I'll grab just an A4 piece of blank paper and, and write on it. I think this is really cool. Take note, we also donate 10% of all profits to women's education. Oh, Me and my family oh, would stay awake all night packing orders from our living room, which we have now outgrown and we have a little studio. We started with just a law range as a law student myself, and we also expanded into medicine and the healthcare sector. And we can't wait to keep growing to each and every subject. 
do this for business as well. I'd love one of these, one with like actions at the end of the um, at the end of a meeting, which I can then almost pull into a separate action sheet at the end of every day to make sure they get everything done. Like a, a business related one of these would be amazing. Each notepad comes with a full explanation on how to use them. And we also sell gorgeous flashcards motivating people to study further. Love Where it. will we be well in done. five years time? Well, we hope that we have a product for every single subject. We also hope to be shipping worldwide and have products in every single language. We also want to be working with a lot more charities. Well, we want to be offering scholarships, learning opportunities and building schools and helping everyone get the education that they deserve. We also want to create networking events and help students students that are just graduating get the job that they deserve. We can't wait to grow this company even further and we would love your help to do so. So Ben, we have been big fans of your journey and we see a lot of similarities between ourselves. Mm -hmm. We want to ask you, how would you have adapted your marketing strategy in these COVID-19 times? We know your marketing strategy during your startup was based on going to fitness events. How would you have done this now? Would you have done it online or would you have gone in a completely different direction overall? Yeah, so if we were doing it now, I think I would be focusing on YouTube. You need to tell your story. I think that's really important. Um, I actually didn't start telling the Gymshark story from a back-end business perspective until a few years ago. Probably should have done that sooner. I'd be all, I'd be pushing on YouTube. I'd be pushing on, pushing on socials. And I keep saying this, getting the product in the right hands, because I promise you that is how the product will spread. You've clearly got a brilliant product, so just get it in the right people's hands. Commonly known as influencer marketing, whatever you want to call it, I'm not fussed. I would love to test your product personally. And if people love it, they will tell their friends, they will post it online, and it will help you greatly. And we also know how fast you grew your company, being one of the fastest growing companies in the UK. So how would you advise to keep up with the growth? I've only got two employees, myself and my dad. How can we keep up and how can we adapt in these people and stock. In terms of scalability, you want to make sure that you've always got stock available. If you're out of stock of something, then it means that you know, you're missing out on growth there. And just make sure that you are looking at what you're good at, looking at what you're bad at, and anything that you personally just aren't particularly good at, that is fine, that is cool, we can work on that in the future, but just make sure that you've got someone else in the business who is filling your gaps. That will help you greatly. It was something that is completely underrated that we did in the early days and helped turbocharge our growth, and I know it can help you massively as well. That was so much fun and we are going to be recording a lot more videos like that. In future, if you do want to send in any videos for us to potentially look at down the line, email to submissions at gymshark.com, which will be on the screen now. This has been so much fun. I absolutely love this. I am so passionate about you know making sure that people can help grow their businesses, particularly in this new world that we're about to enter in the post-COVID world. It's tough right now, but we can really help all of our economies around the world get kickstarted again by starting great businesses. I'm truly passionate about that. And as I mentioned in the video as well, I'm passionate about people having great opportunities. So I think if we can do our little bit to help you guys on your business journeys, you know, that makes us all feel great as well. And I think it's the right thing to do. Yeah, please comment down below as well to support these guys and check out the businesses. They're all brilliant businesses. Comment other small businesses that you know you love, maybe in your local area. You know, let's use this as a space where we can support one another uh, in our growth going forward.